So um, it's really an honor and a privilege to be here and speaking. How can you follow that after? Um, in terms of the Liverpool City region, um, I echo everything that Claude has said, and that is what we're striving to achieve. So the Liverpool City region, we have a local um, cycling and walking infrastructure plan, which, yeah, great, um, which obviously we know um, there's a lot of work to do and we're not there yet. So we've worked with partners in terms of developing a local cycling plan. And why do we need it? Obviously, the environmental, as Claude said, in terms of reducing pollution and in terms of health, I'll just go straightly across, in terms of encouraging physical activity, social inclusion, and looking at, in terms of respiratory diseases, because, because of pollution and high carbon emission, we see a lot of people coming down ill and that impact in terms of the NHS. So we're looking at the economical impact it's having. Cycling is growing, but we're still lagging behind as a city region. There's lots we can do. So 3.5 billion uh, miles were cycled in the UK in 2016. It's increased um, up 23% from 2006. However, um, living in the city, there are hostile cycling in, in environments and we need to create a safe environment so people would feel safe and comfortable to cycle. So if we don't have the infrastructure, we're not going to get people cycling. So the combined region includes Sefton, Wirral, Liverpool, Knowsley, St. Helens and Halton. So we have to look at the bigger picture, not just looking inwards in terms of what each um, local authority can do, but looking outwards, how can we collectively make an impact to make it safer to encourage people to cycle. So uh, Mercy Travel Combined Authority take a coordinating approach in terms of rolling out this um, cycle and walking infrastructure plan. There was a stakeholder engagement um, with local authorities undertaking at a local level and this basically to find out what can we do better because we want to have as much input from the cyclists, from the walkers. Um, so when we do develop the plan, basically it's inclusive and we get people out. Consistency, and I remember Claude mentioned that um, in terms of consistency is such an important factor in terms of working together and getting the plan because if we're not consistent basically we're not going to achieve what we want to so in terms of routine workshop and site visits because there are some sites there are some traffic hotspots that's not safe for cyclists and i know within the city region there are and many cyclists will say to you that area is not safe because of the design of the area so in terms of London Cycling Design Standard, they agreed for use by authorities. So one brand for signage and promotion is still to be revealed. But if there's consistency in the approach to how we design, it would be much better for cyclists and walkers. So you mightn't be able to see this really, but obviously it's developing the evidence base. So how we plan for the next five, 10 years to improve the cycling and walking routes. Again, it's about uh, mapping the cycling networks across the 31 corridors. Again, sorry, you, you can just see the colors, but that is across the city region um, in terms of linking the cycling routes and walking routes. Again, corridor um, prioritization, linking the bus networks, so 5%, again, linking rail networks and leisure and it goes on in terms of the time scale used up in terms of commuting and quite importantly access to employment in terms of people are more inclined to cycle if the routes re reduce their time to employment or to where they live or education so it's taking all those aspects into consideration when we're looking at our route planner or this this slides <laughs> can't even see it but again it's in terms of the routes and how we prioritize 
to ensure that the routes that the people might want to use So, successful secured phase. So, the combined authority has secured funding, 16.7 million total for a project in terms of transforming city fund. And again, that is to upgrade the routes to make cycling and walking much safer and better so it can be used. Phase one includes 55 kilometers new and operated cycle and walking routes with new green infrastructure and biodiversity improvement. So this project will also trial innovative method of data collection and journey planning app with John Moores University, which is really good because you can go on Google Maps and it can plan how to drive and so on, but we want to have a route where you can say to the cyclist, there's traffic here, take this route, um, or for a walker, take there's road closures. So it's looking to encourage using innovation to support people to walk and cycle. So what's next? Delivering phase one route, um, the local plan in terms of approval by the local authority and combined authority and our stakeholders, which is so important in everything that we do, showing that there's stakeholders engagement. So the agreed complete detail of the route and option appraisal for stage two and developing the bid for the transforming city fund by the end of 2019, so we are in October. So, oh, brilliant. <laughs> See, got it in the end, thanks. So again, um, developing phase two, so in terms of transforming city fund. There we go, no, that's the other way. There we go. So there is to be a bike life survey from April to July, don't know how many people knew about it um, or contributed to it. So there was over a thousand representation samples across the city region. The local um, combined region cycling and walking survey that was done in 2018. 68% of the people wanted to see segregated cycle routes and key to encourage more cycling. I think we can all agree that's something that a lot of people are passionate about and it's really needed. Um, Again, a cycle toolkit, full implementation of government targets, um, big change for cycling usage would be with the combined authority, um, city region, um, significant latent demand for cycling, um, and significant benefit for the region in terms of health, revitalization of our high streets, because let's not forget the economical impact and benefit it can have if we have more cyclists and more people working the substantial benefit for people cycling. As I've mentioned, boosting the high street, the town centers, walking improvement, reducing absenteeism. I was having a conversation with one of the panelists there and in terms of some organizations, it's only when you talk about pounds and pennies, they listen. And if you link, if more people cycle, there'll be less absenteeism they might take heed and look at encouraging how can they work with organizations that promote cycling or um, government to promote and actually give staff time off to learn to cycle for those who can't. Um, so what did our bid say? Nine and 10 say walking and cycling creates vibrant areas. 83% says it attracts more customers. And this is what the businesses are saying in terms of the benefit for them. And you can go on and on and 13 to one, but there's so many benefits. If we improve our infrastructure and more people are encouraged to cycle and walk, the benefit is phenomenal. Again, I think I've touched on this already in terms of the NHS, the bike um, saving and so forth. So, given the Liverpool city region, the confidence and opportunity to talk about the benefits of cycling and helping us to respond to the public and media and actually helping us to be more informed to what your needs are, basically will help create a better area and a strategy in terms of action in what we need to develop for the years to come. Okay, and that's yours. Thank you.